Hello guys, welcome to another class of Benko Institute. On today's class, we'll be looking at how to size your generator for a three-bedroom apartment. Often at times, I get messages on WhatsApp, on my mails. They tell me, um, Benko, see, I have so 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 and so load in my three-bedroom apartment. What particular generator would I be needing? You have to explain and what have you before they eventually know the type of generator they need for that apartment. But on today's class, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know, such that you do not need to ask um, a technician or an engineer to refer a particular generator size for you before you go get the generator. Okay, so you will notice there is a white A4 paper with me, so we'll be doing a very small calculation. By calculation does not mean it's quadratic equation or it's integration or calculus, not at all. It's just a small plus and minus calculation and with that calculation you are going to understand easily how to size and um, generators for your three bedroom apartment without further ado let's go into this oh before we go into the calculation proper like you all know a three bedroom apartment has three bedrooms right and it has a living room okay and it has yeah a living room just a living room and then for some three bedroom apartments, they have AC, air conditioners, in all the rooms and the living room. So we're looking at four air conditioners, right? And then they have lighting points. And some living rooms have fans. Okay, so we're putting all this into cognizance. As a matter of fact, I'll be using um, these loads to assess or to better load the generator we need. So you may not have this load in your house, but with this calculation, you'll be able to tell okay just pay attention watch this video to the end and you will get the best this video have to offer without wasting much of your time let's dive straight into the calculation that will involve this a4 paper stay with me first thing first you get an outline in form of a table okay you apply your appliances appliances okay you get the power rating power rating of the appliance and the quantity and of course this will now give you total power okay so in a three bedroom apartment what do we have let's start with the air conditioners in a three bedroom apartment let's assume we have air conditioners for all rooms the living room and the three rooms so we're looking at four air conditioners and because your room is very small uh, they may go with a one horsepower air conditioner so we have air conditioner first air conditioner and okay they may go with one horsepower one horsepower that is the disables 746 watts Okay, we'll be using watts for this calculation. Okay, for all four rooms, we have four air conditioners. Okay, that's four air conditioners. All right, so our next phase now is um, lighting points. Um, so we assume for everyone now should know the best lighting points to get or the best light bulb to get our energy saving light bulbs. So let's go with light bulbs light bulbs uh, let's say the light bulbs for each room should be like three okay i'm assuming my room now my room is three three light bulbs in some rooms it's two light bulbs so let's go with three light bulbs at 15 watts so energy saving bulbs are usually 15 watts max 15 watts so we have three light bulbs for each room and remember we have what how many rooms we have four rooms so we're looking at four times three we're looking at 15 and then we're also assuming there are light bulbs outside the house probably security light bulbs so let's say we have three times four already for the inside for the rooms 12 plus let's say we have three outside 15. okay let's just say maximum maximum we have 18 light bulbs okay so for a three bedroom apartment up next we have ceiling fans okay there are some 
um, three bedroom apartments that have both AC, air conditioners, and ceiling fans. So let's go with fans. And ceiling fans are usually 100 watts. 100 watts. Yours may vary as well. So just put that into context. So for the four different rooms, we have four ceiling fans. So let's say we have four here. Okay. Up next, we have a television set, right? We have TV set. And then let's say there's a TV in the living room and there's maybe two TVs in three of the uh, bedrooms. So let's just say we have just three TVs, okay? And each TV ranges from 100 to 150 watts for flat screen, okay? Most times it's from 100 to 150 watts. Some may get to 200 watts, but that is rare in terms of new modern TV sets now. So let's look at 150 watts. And we have how many? Three. And so what else do we have? Let's look at our pumping machine. Our pumping machine is usually to um, get water. Okay? So it's not... It's almost abnormal for you to live in a three-bedroom apartment and not get water for yourself. Okay? So let's look at pumping machine. There are some pumping machines that are about one kilowatt is that high. So let's look at 1,000 watts. So what we are doing basically is this. We are trying to factor out every appliance we will need. Okay? We are not making exemptions in this regard. Now we are trying to factor out every appliance we need in a three-bedroom apartment. So we've gotten pumping machine. What else do we have in a three-bedroom apartment? Mm, let's say we have freezers or refrigerators as the case may be okay let's say we have freezers let's use freezer let's use the chest freezer um, this is basically used to um, save food okay um, the freezers usually are from 500 to 800 watts they are not as high as the air conditioners and um, the pumping machine. So let's use 600 watts there. 600 watts. It may not even be up to honestly because there was a freezer I saw that just uh, that just 350 watts. But we are just using 300, 600 watts so that at most we are on the safe side. So this is what we have. Is there anything we've missed out? Let's assume our laptop is there and then our phones is there. And what else? Just basic, basic stuff. Let's call it miscellaneous. Okay. Miscellaneous. Let's just say miscellaneous is like 300 watts. That includes our laptops and our phones. Okay. So what we need to do now is to look at the total power. Conditionals, we have 746 watts times 4. 746 times 4. We have 2 nine eight four two nine eight four watts okay and we have light bulbs we have 15 watts light bulb times 18 15 times 18 we have 270 watts that is why it's necessary to get energy saving bulb otherwise for a candescent bulb the regular bulbs you know this will be way higher so we have fans which is 4 times 100 is 400 watts. Okay. And we have 450 watts here. Let me just do the calculation so you see it. So that's 450 watts. 150 times 3. We have 450 watts here. Okay. And then we have 1000. We have 600. Okay. And then we have miscellaneous. Okay. What we just did was to multiply this by this, this by this, just to get this. And of course, miscellaneous is 300 watts, one quantity of miscellaneous. <laughs> all right, that said, total power will be a summation of all this. So what we have now is this, 2984 plus 270 plus 400, 450, 1000, plus 900, plus 600, plus 300, that's 900. So we have a summation of 
6004 watts this is the total load we have in our three bedroom apartment and then for some people what they usually do is when they sum up the load of the apartment they just go ahead to get a generator that is rated 6000 watts uh, but as a technician with overtime experience i am always against that okay i always factor um, efficiency into play i always factor room for expansion and i always factor longevity of the generator these are the three factors i usually look at like i usually look at when i tend to refer a particular rating of generator to my clients so let's get the exact rating so this will now be called the exact rating sorry for my i feel this my handwriting is so poor i don't know i hope you guys can see this <laughs> i really hope you guys can see this my handwriting looks poor but i can see it clearly i hope you guys can see it too so exact rating of generator of generator this is the formula i usually use total load plus 30 percent of total load total load so what this means is this is now six thousand and four plus 30 percent which is 30 over 100 times um 30 over 100 times six thousand and four okay so what we have six thousand and four plus 0 0.3 times 6004 6004 plus originally it would have been easy for me to just get the direct answer but i'm trying to make sure you guys follow the equation easily so what we have now is 1801.2 so automatically the exact rating of generator we'll be needing is this 6004 plus 1 801.2 so what we have now is 7805.2 approximately 7805 so this is like 7.8 um kilowatts okay knowing fully well that uh, 1000 watts is equals to one kilowatt so the exact rating of generator will be needed is 7.8 kilowatts all right guys thanks for staying with us till this very part of the video i know you've learned a lot if you've seen this part if you have seen this part currently that shows you've learned a lot so we'll be needing a 7.8 kilowatt generator to power all the appliances in our apartment okay this is almost 8 kilowatts generator but there is a caveat as much as i've been able to analyze all the load in your apartment um, it is also um, significant to note that not all loads will be on at the same point in time and that is where analogies come into play for some persons they may not be able to afford this eight lower generator why because it is expensive so what do you do you take cognizance of your most essential load what load would i be using when i am on generators if i will be using my ac when i'm putting on generators you strike that out if i will be using my fans when i'm putting on generator you strike that out for me freezers pumping machine tv sets light bulbs are essentials okay ac may not be essential because you can switch to your fan uh, some other things may not be essential but the essential parts you sum that sum them up and use that to calculate the generator you would need but please and please note that the generator you'll be needing after taking out after striking out some loads will be significantly significantly smaller than this one and, and what you should also notice you must at no point put on extra load on that generator otherwise you will damage the generator so that is why most times because i know some clients or some consumers may not every time take those precautionary measures i just advise they go for a bigger generator that can serve all their loads even when everything is on at a particular point in time is that understood so there's something i've noticed that some people um 
Okay, some people may not really know about it. It's our community. We have a membership community. YouTube gave us opportunity to have a membership community where um, YouTubers, YouTube viewers just pay a little token to have access directly to the creators. Okay, for us, it's not expensive. There are different tiers of membership access. You can go check that out. If you click on the join button under this video, you can have access to join our membership community. Here you ask us direct questions. By these direct questions, you have access to us 24-7. Okay, except when we are sleeping anyway. You <laughs> can ask us questions and these questions will be answered. You have access to our earliest video videos we may have shots that we refuse to post on the channel because of how sensitive the videos are and what are you you have direct access to them so if i were you i will click on the membership community that token you also pay is also a way of helping the community helping us as creators here so that we can post more videos of course okay so that is it from this particular video if you've loved this video please do the needful like share and of course subscribe if you haven't already uh we'll be doing more of this we'll be doing more of these subsequent videos we'll be talking about inverters i'll be doing low sizing of um, solar inverters okay so stay with us guys till we meet in our next guys Peace.